want to turn to John 21. Gospel of John. Gospel of John 21. I, uh, I got here uh, not real early, but, but I parked the car at the uh, corner here. Oh, I don't have my thing on. Yeah, I don't have that. And uh, just give me a minute. I want to. So once you get it on, let's take it to. Okay. Well, I need to. I need to get my hands. <coughs> Have you ever had that happen to you? What? The picture. Oh, you want to jump, jump off and get off? Yeah, well, jump. Just, just jump. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's fun, isn't it? That is fun. I'm watching it all, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, I had one right at the corner. And uh, the first day I took, it was Benji I took down there. And the first one I booked, I mean, he smashed it. And he leaped immediately out of the water and threw the hook off. And, uh, but it's a thrill to have him jump like that. Ever have a jump? Yeah, that is just the, the most fun. It's and it. Uh, I don't know if I've ever had a catfish do it, but uh, but it is fun. Okay, guys, why don't you guys move forward to the uh, head of the class? Isn't that the name of a? Uh, Game. When we were little, there was a, a game called the Head of the Class. You have to Google that after the Head of the Class. I think that was a game. Okay, you're you're already goofing. Come here, come on, right here, right over here in front of Mrs. Newman. <coughs> Anybody else want to move? No. There you go. You're not tempted, are you? You sort of tempted? No. All right, John 21. Anyway, I parked over there, and I uh, I got out of the car, and I looked I, I looked through the foliage there, and it looks like the creek is down and it's clearing out. If you threw a line in there right now, you'd probably catch a smallmouth. I I think they would be fighting. Father, bless our message this evening that uh, we would be nourished by it, encouraged by it. Challenged by it. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Uh, when the fish are biting. That's our, our title. Uh, my dad used to follow the PD. There was a, uh, uh, I don't know what's on the PD anymore. Uh, you know, I used to deliver the Cleveland Press. Anybody remember that? Yeah. <laughs> We remember the Cleveland Press. The afternoon paper. Yeah, we remember that way back. And I, I had three routes. I delivered the press. And uh, my dad used to, there was a coin collecting, a guy who would write an article for coin collecting, price stamp collecting. There was one that followed the fishing report. And I don't know how it was, I don't know if it was gauged by the moon, uh, air pressure, but they would actually list the times the time of day uh, when the fish were biting. Yeah, grandmother, you go ahead and take care of that. Here are the grandmother. When the fish are biting. And we would actually, we would actually uh, go to Sandusky Bay according to the listing of those times. And we would go every Friday and every Saturday night. One time I remember leaving and getting on, the, we never got on the freeway. Uh, anybody know why we, why would we not get on the turnpike? There was no freeway. We didn't get on the turnpike. Huh? No, it was because he was afraid the car wouldn't make it. It was a 51 Mercury. And he was afraid that the car wouldn't make it. Money could have been involved in it too. <laughs> But it was, they were afraid they weren't going to make it there and back. I remember one time we got on the freeway, uh, freeway, you know what I mean, the road, and the sun was going down. The sun was setting. We would night fish, you know. 
I think here they fished night. Uh, yeah, it, look at verse 4. But when the morning was now come. So it, does that mean uh, 12 o'clock at night? Or does that mean 6 o'clock in the morning to the Jew? I don't know what time that means. But it definitely was dark. They were fishing in the dark. Uh, night fishing is a very good time to fish. And I'm tempted to go down the river one time with the... Uh, uh, lantern and go down and, and fish when the fish are biting. So let's look at, we have eight points here this afternoon. We are uh, going to uh, uh, look at them. I, I hope we get some of this. Uh, we'll begin at verse 6 and we're going to go through verse 11. Basically, I'm preaching verse number 6. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. I cannot recall preaching out of this about fishing. Abe, the very first sermon I ever preached was Luke, uh, it could be Luke 5. When uh, Peter fished, all, I fished all night, caught nothing, but at thy command, I'll let down the net. And I remember, I was at Bible Believers, we were invited, there was a preach off, not a preach off, but anybody that wanted to volunteer, I did volunteer. And from then on, it was, it was, it was gone home, man. The very first sermon I preached, the title was The Qualities of a Good Fisherman. I have preached that here twice. And the qualities of, of a good fisherman, name some off, if you're a good fisherman. Uh, if you're going to, if you're going to be able to fish and catch fish. Name some off. Patience. Oh, yeah. Patience, definitely. Determination. Well, that's tied in with patience, but that's true. You have to have the right bait. And, I, I, and that was one of my points. You've got to have bait. If, you've got to have bait. The right bait. But you, you have to have something that they're going to eat. A, a bear hook. You might catch a smallmouth on it if it glitters, but it, it's far and few between. Uh, the right bait. Uh, anything else? Uh, yeah. uh, that is another very important point. And uh, I, I'm not saying that's in this message. But if your line's not in the water, you're not going to catch anything. You've got to have your line in the water. About two or three times ago, Ben and I went, and he drove the uh, tricycle, and all the, all the lines got so tangled. It, it was the junglest mess I have ever seen. seen. It was, and then, so he wanted to just take everything apart, cut them, and I said, no, I'm untangling this. It took me 20 minutes to a half hour to untangle it. He got, he got a line wet right away and started fishing. I started on untangling that. But I got it all untangled. But for those 30 minutes, yes, sir. But those 30 minutes, guess what? I did not catch anything because my line was not in the water. Yeah, the right spot. It said throw it out the right side of the ship, the right spot, um, and so on. I mean, there there is five or six points right there. Five or six points right there. Uh, <clears throat> if you're going to be a good fisherman. I'm not drawing anything more than that, Rose. That's, Rose, that's it. I'm not drawing anything more than that. That's what's up there. It says, and it begins here, and he said unto them, who's the he in the story? Jesus, Jesus is. So there is the uh, compelling. Now, you can say the command. Uh, we are commanded to go. We could go there. But I'd rather not be commanded as more compelled to go. Compelled to go because it was the words of Jesus. He said it. And being our commander, we tend to be more compelled of, because it's the person who is asking. It's the per if, if the wife asks me, uh, what are the two things, oh, we would, uh, my mother would call, it, it seemed like religiously. You know, we're talking 1965. The phone rings at 4.30, quarter to 5, before quitting time. What is she asking my dad to do? Get, yeah, well, specifically. Milk and bread. bread. Will you stop at the corner store and get milk and bread? The corner store here where uh, Barker is, which is actually a parking lot there. That building there was in the front. There was another building. It was a delicatessen when we, uh, when I was just a boy. It was a delicate a deli, and we would stop there and, and get 
the milk and bread. My father never balked that I could ever, ever recall. I don't ever recall him complaining. But the compelling was my mother. If the wife asks, if the, if the girl asks, you're compelled to do it, right? Because you're devoted and, and so on. Now, you, you may ask me, and I might complain when she asks me to get, get stuff, but it, it, a lot has to do with who's doing the asking, the compelling. And with our Lord asking, and he said unto them, he said unto them, oh, he says, children, have you any meat? And they said, no, we haven't caught a face. And he said unto them, the one who's doing the compelling, if, if a person likes to fish, has caught fish, uh, in our day and age, the, the guy that would be on the boat with the uh, program on, on the boat for fishing on a Saturday morning or Sunday morning would have been, anybody ever hear of us older people, Gadabout Gaddis? Yeah. You remember Gadabout Gaddis? You, guys, you don't remember Gadabout Gaddis. It was a, it was a program about fishing, and Gadabout Gaddis would always be out there fishing, this is how you fish. They would actually take you to places where you think you're not going to catch fish. One of them, if I remember was, was the sewers in New York City. The sewers! Where the sewers dumped out into these basins and, and uh, uh, waterways that probably went out, is it the Hudson River there? Is that the Hudson River? What's in New York, New York? The Hudson? East River. The East River, the Hudson River, but the main rivers that are there, that dumps out in there, he would take his boat, actually go in the tunnels, the concrete tunnels, and, and get, he was catching bass. I don't know if it was largemouth or smallmouth bass, but the proof of the pudding was that, um, that there were actually fish in there. Now, you're, you want to, if, if he asked you to go fishing, you would be compelled to go because the hope is you're going to catch fish. Now, at this moment, they don't know it's Jesus. They didn't know it was him. It was just somebody on shore that's asking, and, 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 and he said unto them, they're, they're, they're compelled to go because they are people who like to fish. They were, they were told to go here. Now, some say that Peter was backslid and went fishing. I, and, and recently I read, oh, he wasn't backslid. He was just killing time. He said, well, we're here. Why don't we throw a line in? So they threw a line in while they're waiting for the Lord to come because they were, they were commanded to be here. Now, you could take it either way, but I like, I like the latter, that they weren't in, in the state of sinning. They were just waiting for the Lord to come. Well, the Lord does come. And since they like to fish, uh, like I said, I can watch a bobber in a fish uh, in a bathtub till the cows come home. I'm hoping that thing goes down and catch fish. The compelling, he said unto them, and and it's and he says that cast our next in all sea words tonight. So it's going to uh, line right up here. They they cast the casting. They cast the, the line. In. And so if, if one of the, the point you had brought up, brother, if your line is not in the water, you are not going to catch a fish. It, it, now, this is obviously a soul-winning message. Here you are, you're throwing out, casting out, and they're throwing out a net. They're not throwing out a line like this. If you throw out a line... If you only have one hook on it, you catch one fish. When they throw a net out, you're, you're going to encompass a large volume of fish. But but he casts he casts it out. If you don't if you don't cast it out, you're not going to you're not going to catch anything. So uh, and, and being the fishermen and always hopeful, they're always hopeful. They go ahead and cast the line out. So we we get there. I actually have the oh if you're if, Picture this guy is casting out gospel tracts. And another one in the parables, the very first thing in Matthew 13, what are they casting out? Anybody recall? Seed. They're casting out seed. The seed's not going to sprout unless you throw the seed out. And the gospel message, gospel tracts, verbally telling somebody about Jesus, is throwing seed out there. So the casting must take place. Uh, what, what we do is we get complacent about it and we, we stop casting out the seed. And um, these boys, 
will, uh, now I'll throw mine on the bottom. They don't want to catch a carp and they don't want to catch a cat, generally. They want to catch a smallmouth bass and they want to catch a, uh, a northern pike. So they'll be casting. We've cast so much, one of the last times Buster cast, he caught a catfish. That's kind of rare on a, on a lure. I'll catch catfish with a lure too, but if you're not out there casting, they'll throw it a hundred times, you lose count, two hundred times, and so on. And, and when we're casting, we, we get discouraged, well, it's time to go home, you cast it again. <coughs> well, it's time to go home, you cast it again. You, well, you know, I should be going home. He cast it again and cast it again. And then, all right, it's time to go home. So you say, well, what do you say? One more cast. That's it. You got it, brother. One more cast. So we throw, if it's not on this cast, I'm leaving. You throw it out and you reel it in. Well, then what do you say? Well, just another. And you throw it out again. But sometimes on that last cast, what happens? Anybody? You get, you, <laughs> you get snagged. No, I've had it where you catch fish. I caught the fish, and then you're encouraged to cast it again. Because usually if one hits, that means they're hitting in pairs or more. It's got to mean that. <laughs> so you'll cast out more of the casting. And you want to go where the fish are biting, the compelling, the, ca the casting. And, and the, uh, the net. It says, our next part in our verse here, in verse 6, the net, cast the net on the right side of the ship. Now we could say where it was cast, and, and there's got to be significance to the right side of the fish. That's not part of the, the, the story here. But what is the net in the story? What is the net? The gospel. So uh, my next C word here is the content, the, which is basically is the bait. The content of the message, when you throw that out, and that is the, uh, you know, it, and it's got to be a simple message, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Right? There's no mystery to this. If fish are hungry, if fish are hungry, fish will bite. If fish are hungry, fish will bite. If fish are not hungry, fish are not going to bite. We get to that Sagamore Creek, believe it or not, in Sagamore Creek, those steelhead, we, we were in the pool, right by Sagamore Road, where it dumps off, we're in the pool. Uh, Nathan was there, Ben was there, the wife was there, I was there. Uh, there. There must be 20 of them in there. Maybe I'm exaggerating. Steelhead. I got the salmon sacks. I, uh, uh, we dangle it right in front of their nose. And they don't hit, they, 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 they don't hit it. Now, I don't know how, how you get them to hit. But, but the, content, the content was not what they wanted. Either they're not hungry or they don't want what you got. And if the lost world doesn't want what you have, you're not going to get them to bite. But the content must be the right bait. If you're going to catch a smallmouth bass, you're going, to, you're going to use what? A lure or a maggot. If you're going to catch a catfish, what's the bait? So you say that. Chicken livers. Now listen, I got crawlers. I threw the crawlers. They all hit crawlers. I, I know you're tired, folks, so it's okay. You can sleep. I threw the crawl out there. They did not hit it, and it laid there for a while. I just said, well, I'll break open those chicken livers. I opened up those chicken livers. The next thing, my pole was doubled over. He, they, they literally, and it's a glob of it. Those, those catfish literally, they must inhale it. It just, they suck it up and it always catches them in the same place on the lip. I've noticed every time. It must be the direction of the river. If you were on the other side of the river, it always hooks them on the left side of the mouth. I, no exception. It's on, the, on this side of the mouth. If we were on the other side of the river and it floats downstream, it must then hook them on the right side. I don't think I've ever taken one off that wasn't hooked on that side that I can recall, but they take that chicken, it was the content that they wanted. That there was a need, they are hungry for it, and they, uh, uh, there's another method, a guy just, the guy that sells me the chicken liver at the, at the grocery store said, you take dog food, poke holes in it, tie, tie it to uh, the can to a string, throw it out there. He said, third time you do that, you leave it out there, that's like a lake. The, the catfish know where it is. 
You throw that out there, they'll hit anything. Anything. And they'll, they'll devour it. Keep that in, in, in your mind, like at Mosquito Lake or something. But it, they, it's the content of what you have, and they have to be hungry for it. So the content is very, very important. If you're catching them on any other kind of bait, it isn't the gospel bait. It must be the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. If you catch them on any other thing, you know, I'm kind of down in the dumps, and, and I, I, I want to feel a little better. Uh, what does it say? It says, uh, thou uh, healest. There's a verse. It appears twice. Uh, uh, something about healing the wound slightly. Uh, you know, anybody familiar with that verse? In other words, you, you, you kind of feel good for a little while. There are messages that make you feel good, and it heals your hurt slightly, but it's not going to cure you. Only the gospel message going from, as we pr preach this morning, from the old nature to the new nature is going to heal you completely. Uh, thou, thou, healest the, the, uh, the, thou healest thy daughter, it says, I think, slightly. I know you're looking it up, but I, it, it does appear there. Uh, uh, see if you can find it. Uh, he, I think it, uh, the word is healeth, and it could be slightly. The casting, the compelling, it's, we are compelled by Christ. And we are to get our line wet. We are to cast it out there. And the content that we cast is this net. This net. And he says there, on the right side of the fish, and ye shall find. So he said that, he, he says, or this hope that you will find. Uh, our next C word is the contemplating. Anytime I throw a line in the water, I am contemplating catching a fish. Catching a fish. Now, one time, um, uh, Corey had gone fishing, and uh, she's never, I don't think she ever caught a fish in her life, contemplating. So we were out there, and uh, we were catching nothing. I think Nathan threw the line out there 4,000 times. I mean, we lost count. And you know what came up? Zilch. What came up on my line? Nothing. Nathan caught nothing. I caught nothing. And I figured, well, you know what? I, I know how to catch a fish here. So I'm going to have uh, Corey uh, catch a fish. So I baited her up, and I just threw the line. You know, you don't have to throw it across the lake to catch a fish. They'll be right where you sit, lady. You just dip it right there over the edge, right amongst the rocks, real close to shore. And guess what? Line goes down, up comes a fish. But it's a little one. It's a little panfish, you know. So she caught it. We, we had five. I think she caught five. So when, 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 when they were casting the net and uh, compelled to do it, and that net went out, they are contemplating catching a fish. I mean, when you throw it out there, it's like, well, I, uh, I, if you don't want to clean fish and you're supposed to clean, maybe, maybe you don't want to catch a fish, right? But by the way, if we catch a fish, who cleans the fish? Oh, you? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah he, he did that. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I'm talking about the spiritual fish. Who cleans them? God does. Jesus does. Christ does. The Holy Spirit cleans them. When you catch spiritual fish, when you catch and win a soul, it's Jesus that cleans them up. We don't clean fish, right? We catch fish. Jesus cleans fish. Amen? The, uh, uh, the, uh, yeah, you got it? Jeremiah 6, 14. Yeah, read it. They have healed also the herd of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. And then Jeremiah 8, 11. For they have healed the herd of uh, the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, where is the peace? Leave there it is, Jeremiah 6, Jeremiah 8. You healed the hurt of my daughter slightly, saying, Peace, peace. In other words, there are messages that will heal you, but it will not cure you, and it's only slightly. Right? That's what probably keeps the masses from going crazy. <laughs> A, a message like that that heals them slightly but doesn't cure them like, the, like what Jesus does. 
the compelling, the casting, the content, the contemplating. When you go fishing, you are contemplating catching fish. Amen? Contemplating. And it says there in that verse, they cast therefore. They cast therefore. So contemplating, you know, we can, he, he, gives the, the, he gives the request, compels them to do it, but they then went and did it. They then went and did it, showing the confidence, the confidence or the complying to the request and the confidence that they will catch fish. Amen? Do you want to go with a person fishing who likes to fish or doesn't like to fish? You want to go fishing with a guy who likes to go fishing. Uh, when, when I went fishing, I had a friend, uh, it's Tom Astock. Tom Astock, if you're listening, I, I, I always like going with him. We would go up to the bay, and, and we don't believe in luck, you know, but for good luck, there's one thing we always did. We, fit, we stopped at this little tiny drive-in between the Turnpike and Sandusky Bay, this little drive-in, and I, I always ordered the same perch sandwich every time, without fail, always ordered it, and it, it was our good luck. If you didn't eat the fish sandwich, you're not going to catch fish. That was the deal. So we always ate the same perch uh, filet sandwich. What, I kid you not, I had my 65 Chevelle, and we're sitting there, we would just sit on the hood of the car. We would get right up on the hood of the car. That, it was a convertible, top was down. One time, the filet slipped out of the bun, <laughs> and it fell on the hood of the car. It was a, a dark blue Chevelle, Malibu. It discolored the finish of the car. Yeah, the finish of the car was never the same in that spot. So I always wondered after that, what, what went down in my belly? It, I don't, I, it, but it, it actually discolored the car. And uh, I thought, wow. But I still, ate, I still ate the sandwich, you know. Anyway, the confidence. We go c contemplating and with confidence we cast therefore. Right? In verse 6. And now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. They catch. And now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. And they contemplate they have this confidence that there's going to be the catch. The catch. Uh, the most white bass we've ever caught at one time. It was only one time only. Do you recall? Now, it might be a fish story. I don't know. I thought 50. How many? What were you going to say? Oh, you conservative girl. 2025? I thought we caught up to 50. But they were uh, 8 to 10 inches. Brother, now they're how big? What are you catching? 10, 14, I mean 14, 15 inches. 14 to 16 inches. Now what, when we went, we're talking 45 years ago. And when, when they were hitting, we'll say that big, 10 inches, we were like, wow, because a lot of times when the white bass are running, they're like this. Just We, we call them pizzawees, pizzawees. But we caught, let's say, about 50 like that. Now for us, that we were just, we were really happy. And the whole time, what did I do? What were you doing and what was I doing? What were you doing the whole time? You don't remember? <laughs> no complaining? <laughs> no, the whole time you were catching them. And the whole time I was baiting you up. I couldn't keep, I couldn't keep up, up with working the lines, baiting them up and taking the fish off while you were catching them. You don't remember that? Well, maybe you wanted to complain, but you weren't complaining that I can recall. But we were, we, we were catching them, you were catching them like crazy. The catch, there was a multitude, the multitude of fishes. We would go out there perch fishing in two hours. There was no limit back in the day. We, we had 100 perch. In two hours, three hours, 100 perch. It was as fast as you could get your line in the water. You think that's a fish story, man? Those guys would go up to the bay or out to uh, Lorraine and they'll rent a, uh, a, a hut, one of those ice huts. They drag them out there a half a mile out or however far they drive them out. And there's no limit. You know what they catch on a Friday, Saturday, and a Sunday? You know how many? Anybody want to guess? 
thousands, thousands. They bring in one, two, or three thousand perch in that, in that ice house. You know, you hear stories like that. It's as fast as you can pull it up. We used to go with this guy, uh, he died of cancer. Uh, I can't think of his name right now. I remember talking to him, he was a Presbyterian. Uh, I can't remember it. He used, to, he used to go out fishing and he said, well, why am I doing this? I could get paid to do it. So he went and got a, a, a captain's license so that he could charter. So they could only fit six on the boat. It, you know, his first mate, and there were like four of us. I think that at the most we had six. We we're pulling them up like crazy. As fast as you could get it in the water. And he's sitting there, you actually get tired. You get tired, you get exhausted of catching them. And he said, and he said to me, and he said, look to your left. So I looked to my left. He said, now look to your right. And I looked to my right, and he said, millions of them. Millions as far as you can see. You're right, right? The catch, the catch. They are out there. Now what's the limit on those perch today? 30. It's 30. Limit on the perch is 30. We would be pulling up what we call jumbos, you know? Jumbo perch. I think on one of the trips with this fellow, I can't think of his name right now. It'll probably come to me. I, I went and I, I turned it in. He was a captain, and it was the, it was the last fish. And, and, and I'm bringing it up. I'm bringing it up on my old antique steel rod. And he said, wow, this is a big one. This is a big one. And it came up, it was a perch, it was a fish Ohio. So I, I, I did get a certificate. I, I sent it away to the state and I, and I got my certificate for it. But they are, they are, they are out there. The catch is out there. Even it's, if it seems dry and it seems barren, it seems as though the fish aren't biting. Folks, the fish are biting. We need to be encouraged that the fish are biting. There are fish that are born every day and those people and those little babies one day need to get saved just like everybody else. Fish. Right, the catch. Verse nine. And as soon as they were come to land, all right, they take the fish and the fish go to land. The land there is, is heaven. One day we are gonna be not in this country, that land, we're gonna be in that country. We're going to be up there in that country. All the fish are going to be in that net are going to be taken to that country. Amen. When they come to land. One day. And the significant thing, if you remember in the first story, it could be Luke 5, what happened to the net? Anybody recall? Anybody know what happened to the net? The net break. The net was broken. But look at verse the 11. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, 153. There's probably something significant about that number. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Folks, when, you, when you're saved by Jesus Christ, you are eternally secure. The net will not break and you will not be lost. Amen. The net won't be broken. That all are going to be taken to the country. And that is the count. When, when he counts, when we don't have to, you know, there are people that write down, you know, so-and-so got saved and they write that name down. I'm not, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. They write their name down. I, I just don't feel compelled to do that. They, you know, I want a soul to the Lord, they write their name down and so on, and they, and they have these counts. Who's doing the counting, man? Jesus is doing the counting. Jesus is doing the counting. It's going to be an, uh, not an exaggerated count. Not, not, not some false count. It's going to be the correct count. The count. And the count will be accurate. None will be lost. Amen. The fish are biting, folks. The fish are biting. They're biting off of, they are biting off of that billboard that are up there. How do I know that? Because people either are happy about it or are complaining about it. People are biting off of that. They're nibbling off of it. Even when the fish are not biting, and you throw it out, I, I caught two turtles. I caught the biggest rubberback turtle I ever saw in my life. I let it go in Sagamore Creek. And, and you, you cast out and then your bait is gone. People are biting. They're biting. It could be a crawdad, it could be a small cat, it could be a, a turtle. And they suck that chicken liver right off of that thing. I don't know how they do it, but they get it right off of it. You know, if you don't have that, uh, that, 
that what is grizzle in there, what not to hook it onto, they suck it off. Ben always comes up to me and says, will you bake me up? Do you like the ham, the chicken livers? Anybody here like the ham and the chicken livers? It's pretty gross. Now, I'll bake the wife up, but Ben, I'm sorry, I'm not baking yet. <laughs> you gotta be a man. You gotta be a man, right? When the fish are biting, and sometimes they hit like that. Sometimes they hit like that. They'll take it and they literally will leap out of the water. They'll shake their head from left to right to try to throw that hook off. There's, there's, and it doesn't mean they always, you always lose them. I like it when they try to throw it off, they can't, and they're hooked, and you got it. Amen? It's always fun. The compelling, the casting, the content, the contemplating, the confidence, the catch, the country, and the count. Shake hands before leaving.